<laughs> Hi, everybody. Veronica Cole here. And um, this is actually a soul chat, but I'm doing it uh, a little bit early, which will be um, put out there on Facebook, actually, on Wednesday. So I wanted to address empaths today because um, are you an empath? Because I'm an empath and I think of us as super responders. Were you told that you were overly sensitive as a kid? That you had to get a thicker skin? Or actually that you were shamed for being so sensitive? This is something that I remember a lot as a child. Do you experience chronic exhaustion and you want to escape when you're in a, a crowded area um, or an area with a lot of people and become overwhelmed because there are just so many feelings and you get yourself overwhelmed with feelings? But sensitivities can vary depending on the type of empath that you are and there are labels that continue though. And the labels are generally that you're wrong, you're out there, you're weird, um, you don't really fit in. And you may fit in with some things, but oftentimes, you know, we sit in the background and we observe. So, we don't block out stimulation. We don't have filters like a lot of other people to do that. And you need to learn how to do that, which is what I had to do. I had to learn how to develop filters and how to block out certain things so that I wasn't carrying all of this, uh, all of these feelings that really were not mine. I had to learn how to work that through. And first of all, I had to discover that that was happening. Um, because we absorb into our bodies positive and stressful energies, both of them. But we feel deeply and actually because of the way and the depth of feeling that we do have, we can feel oftentimes what would be considered the secrets of the universe, if you will, because we're able to go oftentimes where many cannot go in our feeling state. And uh, it's more than just the physical. And so if you're an empath, you understand that this is more than just your physical being. Although your physical being, because you're a human being, is very much a part of being an empath. Because you feel it in your body, as well as in your feelings, right? So feeling deeply not only lets us... Um, discover or know or sense many things that a lot of other people may not sense. And by the way, I do believe that everybody has this ability to do this. It's just that they, maybe they were not uh, nurtured to bring it out in them, or perhaps um, you were born with a stronger intention to come here and to be an empath and to be able to do this. Um, because we understand passion and creativity and, uh, a lot of other people do too, but we take it to the depths. So as a child, I never quite fit in anywhere. Um, you know, I grew up in a family of seven children and, um, I was the only girl for a long time. I was the oldest and the only girl. And so my brothers were out there doing sports and they were, you know, they were stellar at all of that sort of sports minded stuff. And um, I was oftentimes reading. I spent my life mostly reading and we lived in a very big house and I would be in this one certain area of the house we called the parlor. And that's why I would be reading my collection of books and um, which I always managed to collect. And 
but because I never fit in, I never really had the sense of uh, friends or people that I associated with as a child that could really get me and really understand my sensitivities. I oftentimes felt that I was cast out because I was different. I was highly sensitive. I would cry um, with anything that created a pain in my heart. I would oftentimes feel wounded. And my mother understood this because my mother was also an empath, but we never really spoke about it, but she never made me feel bad or guilty, or she was never the one that said to me, oh, you're too sensitive. She understood that. But again, because we never really spoke about it, and I didn't have any friends who were highly sensitive, um, at least they never, they never felt like they were, because even some of my closest friends, and I mean, I, I did have two friends that were fairly close and they were a different story, but they were more like me, you know? So I did have them to talk to, but not a lot. And we didn't identify always on that level, but we did have a camaraderie. But I really was actually a very social child. I wanted to be around people. I wanted to experience things. And I took a big interest in the people that were around me. Um, but it was not until I was an adult that I started to want to know more about, you know, what was going on with me. Because I didn't have anyone to relate to, um, I found that I couldn't like really sit down and discuss with somebody because I didn't even realize what was going on. Why I would be so overwhelmed because I was excited to be in a crowd. I was excited to participate in an activity, but that excitement. So was incongruous because incongruent with a lot of the feelings, the other feelings that I had, which was I could leave an event and be feeling very anxious and very overwhelmed, exhausted, to be honest. And um, I think one of the things that I really wish I had known is that everyone has an energy field around their body. And it's a subtle light penetrating and extending inches, and it can't even be a few feet out. And that would have been helpful for me to know because then I did understand when, once I discovered this, that um, these energy fields, they would communicate emotions, uh, physical well-being, distress. Now, these are all things that I would be picking up in people. And in crowded areas, for most of us who are empaths, um, the energy we have overlaps with others and overlaps with what they're feeling and they're experiencing. So no wonder we would get confused or we would become overwhelmed because we're taking all of this in and we don't have a filter for it. So oftentimes, you know, what I discovered, you know, as time went on and more life and more education and more of my own spiritual awakening, um, you know, and becoming a therapist and, um, and a coach, I discovered that in an attempt to block these sensitivities, many empaths um, will turn to abusing drugs or alcohol or food or anything else that could um, take them away from these uh, highly sensitive experiences. But the other thing that I know for sure is that in order to become whole, we need to embrace our sensitivities, not run from them if we want to heal. So it's um, embracing those sensitivities. You have to, first of all, trust that, you know, that you're okay. You're okay just the way that you are and that there isn't anything about you that is weird or unusual um, it's just that you're highly sensitive and that's a gift. And I didn't learn that one. Oh my gosh. Until I was, um, I think I was way, um, 
think it was when I did my psychoanalytic training that I finally discovered that it was a gift. Actually, it was my psychoanalyst at the time because I'm trained in modern psychoanalysis, but I practice psychoanalytic psychotherapy, and um, which means that I can go deep. But the reason that I can go deep is partly because of my training. It helped me to identify certain things so that I wouldn't go into this place of being in this deep place with all of these feelings and not knowing whose feelings were whose. You know, you really have to know how to identify them. You have to know how to separate the feelings. And so as I, I got further into this and began to see some of the struggles that people had, it seemed like a lot of the, the clients that gravitated towards me were empaths and they had difficulty with some of these areas in their life because they didn't really know how to cope with all of the strong sensations and the strong feelings that they were having and they would oftentimes be berating themselves for it um sometimes very uh over apologetic when they doesn't when they don't need to be so it's it's about really learning how to love yourself for the gifts that you have and the special human being that you are. And we're all special in our own way, but yet we're all the same, right? Meaning uh, if you're not an empath, you're special too, but everybody has to find out their unique qualities. And as empaths, we really need to be kind to ourselves to recognize and to get to the point where we understand why we may have been so wounded as kids, you know, what was going on with us? Why did that happen? Well, first of all, we didn't have the knowledge, but it's not the knowledge, you know, it's not the knowledge that will heal you, but it's the working through of some of these situations. And then it's also the knowledge of understanding how to separate and how to um, understand and work through the process of you know, not being so merged with everybody. There is actually a time and a place for that. It's very wonderful as a, as a therapist um, and as a coach, but as a human being, regular, you know, living your life, it can be very confusing if you're not understanding that. So you deserve to be um, heard, to be nurtured, to be supported, and learn to embrace your abilities because they're precious. And this is why I specialize in helping empaths flourish. Um, because empathy is medicine, you know, it's medicine for all of us. And uh, some of us have the ability to feel and explore that more than others, but you have such a gift. So I am going to um, have this posted for my soul chat on Wednesday, but um, I also want to remind everybody that I am in the midst of doing a five-day free workshop that is um, on Facebook, it's on Zoom, and it's from 3 to 4 Eastern Time. And it's taking place right now from uh, Monday, November 9th. And that will be through the next five days through Friday. And then I'm offering four bonus sessions where I do interviews. So if you're interested, um, you could just go on to my Facebook page. And there is, a, um, there is a registration that you could fill out because it's going to be in my private Facebook group. Uh, which is Sacred Alchemy After Loss. And you could also find the private Facebook group and you could go on there and you could uh, request and uh, to join if you're interested. Otherwise, I will see some of you tomorrow and, uh, and then I'll see others um, hopefully Wednesday when I do this uh, soul chat. You'll come in, you'll tune in. So take care. Thank you for being here. Be well.